watching the Pac-12 on ESPN from the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. It's a critical game between NCAA Tournament hopefuls UCLA and Utah. The Bruins enter tonight's game with 19 wins. Our own Joe Lenardi has them among the first four out. We'll have Joe on the show tonight. Oh, they're my God. UCLA third in the Pac-12. They're a hot team. They won six of seven, but their final three games are away from Pauley Pavilion starting tonight. As for Utah, Lenardi has them in the next four out. The Utes are fourth in the conference, but they are even hotter than UCLA. Won four straight, seven of their last nine. And the Utes have their final three games at home. Tonight, Saturday against USC, a quick turnaround, a day game, and then Colorado next weekend. And Utah, hi everybody. life elevated. I can't <laughs> believe we just wasted time on Joe Lenardi when we got two of the greatest programs going head-to-head. -head. Fate of the known world in the balance here. Utah, life elevated. This is what we live for. You got... Aaron Holiday versus Justin Bibbins in the backcourt. Two fantastic leaders who do absolutely everything. Aaron Holiday, a Los Angeles native, as is his counterpart, Justin Bibbins. Bibbins, the fifth year senior. Both of these guys statistically dominant. Then up front, you got Thomas Welsh, the immortal Irishman, playing fantastic ball. An automatic machine when he's shooting his mid range jumper. He's added a long range jumper as well. Dave Collette. He plays his best against the best, and that's what we have here tonight in the Conference of Champions. And Aaron Holiday, a Pac-12 Player of the Year candidate, he leads the conference in scoring in league games at 21 points per game. He's also the best three-point shooter in the conference. Here's Chris Wilt putting it on the floor. Holiday with a pull-up jumper and a great start. Aaron Holiday is ability to put the ball on the floor, get in the paint. The guy is just an absolute tiger in a trance, a saint of circumstance out there. As he goes, so do the UCLA Bruins. And with the trouble in Arizona surfacing right now with Alonzo Trier, who knows how the Conference of Champions will play out. Great pass, Justin Bivens. And Colette with the basket just to clean that up since you brought it up. For clean those it that, up. Well, i got to tell the story. You said Trier is out, so i got to explain what's going on. He is uh, suspended. He is ineligible, ruled ineligible by the NCAA. Right. Arizona is appealing that as Goleman misses and Parker Van Dyke gets the rebound. How long is that going to take? Well, we don't know. But it, it's... The substance that Trier was suspended for last year. And, the same one. Well, the report is that it could be a remnant of that and that the NCAA is uh, in agreement with Arizona, that that's a possibility. In agreement with what about Arizona? That, it, that it's a remnant, that it's possibly from what he took in 2016 when he reportedly unknowing took a banned substance. So if that's the case, if it's something that well, so was there before, then th th that may determine how long... He's ineligible whether he come back uh, sooner than later as the tip falls off the rim. Push the ball if you're the running use. Try to chase these bears up into a canyon. Great defense, Chris Wilkes. This crowd is fired up. Holiday on the other end. He has all four for UCLA. Holiday's ability to extend himself. He's not one of those players who stands out physically. Very short, maybe, maybe six feet tall, but he plays like a true giant in a world of cowering and shriveling midgets. Beeler in the starting lineup now with the injury to Cedric Bearfield. Beautiful pass. And Parker Van Dyke, who started now three straight games. You mentioned Bearfield. He is out with a rib injury. Played only four minutes in Utah's last game. Not available tonight, although one of their key players off the bench, Jace Johnson, he should go after not playing against uh, Washington State in their last game due to a foot injury. Bruins look off, off, awesome in the set <laughs> offense here. <Okay. laughs> I'm trying to get it out here. I love backdoor offense. I love Aaron Holiday, who's out there just absolutely playing at a different level than everybody else. Okay, this is the thing. Yeah, so see, see, see what it says the NCAA agreed about the remnant of the substance that Trier unknowingly so, ingested in. So why'd they suspend him? I, I don't know. We're going to find <laughs> out. Well, hopefully, hopefully we'll find out. Because remember, when he got suspended for those uh, 19 games right. last year, right. it, the substance had to completely leave his system before he could be eligible again. That's my question. Right. So, so what happened is that Glett scores again inside. Let's talk about this game. I'm trying to, please. You keep putting these things up on the screen that have nothing to do with this basketball game. Please, back to the game. Beautiful pass. 
Goleman collides with Bibbins. This zone defense by Chris Goviak. They've been playing a lot of zone defense to run and use. The Bruin offense, though, is perfect tonight. Jalen Hands with UCLA's first three-pointer. The Bruins are two games back of Arizona right now. USC, a game and a half out, two back in the loss column after the Trojans won last night in Colorado. Here's Bibbins leaning in, and that's a foul on Holiday. And we saw it against Oregon last weekend, Bill, when Holiday got in foul trouble. UCLA was an entirely different team. They had a lead. Oregon came back. The Bruins won in overtime. But that's why it's going to be interesting to see whether it's Holiday or DeAndre Ayton that wins player of the year in the Pac-12. It will depend on who wins the conference championship. Right now, that's Arizona. They got a two-game lead over UCLA in the loss call. I guess my point is I think Holiday could still win it even if the Bruins Absolutely. don't win the title. The game that killed the Bruins in Holiday's chances fell down Dave Collette. Dave Collette, who shaved his beard last night, come out with a new look. Fiery, young, tenacious, intense. He's shooting 80% from the floor his last five games. And he's got six points already tonight. He's only missed five shots in five games. Bruin offense. Superb. Thomas Welsh with the baseline. Jay. Jalen Hands in the starting lineup now. He has supplanted Prince Ali. The Bruins playing fantastic. They're making the running Utes walk the ball up the court. But it was the Bruin long oh, transition opportunity. Throw it Hands down, with Jaylen. the steal. Strip by Ben. It's all a great play to not foul and reach in. As clean as you can get, Ty Rothen. In and out on the three. That's the kind of play that has to go down. Ignite this crowd, which is ready to explode. Second leading score in attendance in the Pac-12 Conference of Champions. Traveling. I completely disagree with that call. That's it, great footwork. Look at this. That's foot a travel. Play. Please. Thank that's you, Vern they, Harris. That's what they called. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Jardy Ant's Impagla Flows and Tablets. Two top 10 teams. One Big 12 blockbuster. Yes! Kansas, Texas Tech, Saturday at 415 on ESPN. Kansas has a one game lead on Texas Tech. Tech won at Fog Allen earlier this season. Texas Tech trying to end that streak for Kansas of 13 straight Big 12 titles. You know all about that, having won uh, or been part of uh, those 13 straight conference championships at UCLA. Nothing like being part of a great team. It changes your life forever. And what's going on right here in Utah right now, there's a pall of sadness over the town and the city and the state because three weeks ago, John Huntsman passed away on February 2nd. They had the funeral service in this building, which is named in his honor. The place was packed. John's son, Mark, is here. John's wife is here, sitting in their seat, and they have a beautiful jersey right over John Huntsman's seat where he sat for all these years, and I miss him terribly. We were here for the Arizona game. John Huntsman was not here. He was sick that night, and he never made it back. Rest in peace, John. We will never forget. Thanks for your life, which has given all of us ours. Here's David Collette, who's got eight points now for Utah. Eight of the ten for the Utes. The 24-year-old who is married and his wife is due the week of the Pac-12 tournament. It's fine. Wilkes for three. Hits it. John Hollinger. Are you old enough to remember John Hollinger's eight years at ESPN? You mean the John Hollinger I talked to for 15 minutes before the game tonight? I have no idea who you talked to, please. You were standing right here. I was working, getting ready for the game. He's now been the head of basketball ops for the Memphis Grizzlies. He's here tonight to keep a lookout for Dave Collette, who's down. Yeah, got hit hard, and I don't think the officials saw what happened. Don't know if it was... Uh, a flagrant situation, or if there was just incidental contact, but Collette obviously shaken up. The old hip to the groin, always an effective defensive tactic. The dribble handoff here. I, I don't think that was intentional by Golem, and he wasn't Evans, even looking no. at him. But he took a fall there like... You've been there is what you're saying. I've been there. So you know that Larry Kraskoviak is from Shelby, Montana, right? 30 miles from the Canadian border out in the middle of nowhere, on the edge of the middle of nowhere. 
What does that have to do with Colette's uh, injury? Because in July 4th, 1923, in Larry's hometown, they had the World Heavyweight Boxing Championship between Jack Dempsey and Tommy Gibbons. And it was an incredible event. And Collette is uh, headed to the Utah locker room as they feed Golan underneath, and he's fouled by Beeler. Now imagine if they didn't have Chase Johnson right now. Again, we mentioned he was out with a foot injury their last game, with Collette now going to the locker room. But the Bruin offense has been the story here. And when the Bruins play like this, they can beat any team in the entire country, and they can win the championship. Well, we saw them win in Arizona. That's uh, one of just two true road wins for them, and they've got to play their final three games on the road as Goleman gets the first free throw. And they're going to Colorado after this game, and Colorado handed the Bruins a real thumping at Pauley Pavilion. One out of two. Six-point advantage. Here's Justin Bibbins, grad transfer from Long Beach State. Why do guards come back to get the ball after a rebound? Why don't they get running up the court? Bibbins lost it, and boy, folks here thought it was off of Welsh. Play on. UCLA is uh, five of its last five. They just saw a replay here and are a little stunned at the call. Utah has played a lot of zone lately. They're in a man-to-man -man defense here. Jace Johnson doing a nice job of denying Thomas Welsh, the immortal Irishman. It was fun watching uh, his senior day, huh, at Pauley last uh, Saturday. What a great senior day for UCLA. Welsh had trouble there. Timer at three. Holiday has to let it fly. And boarded by Johnson. Jace Johnson, who played magnificently in the Utes. Big victory at Arizona State. Crossover, change of pace, and all happening for Justin Bibbins. And they get Wilkes for the foul, his first, second on the Bruins. Larry Kriskoviak is in his seventh year at Utah. Remember, they won six games his first year. Then he gets him to the Sweet 16 just a couple of years later. He sent a few guys to the NBA, like Kyle Kuzma, who's had a terrific rookie season with the Lakers. Kuzmania going crazy in Los Angeles and throughout the universe. Larry Kriskoviak, whose three boys all play on the same high school team, they're playing a state tournament play-in game. Yes, strong. Ty Rawson at the hoop. And, and Larry's wife, Jen, is at that game, which started down the road about 15 minutes away. At 6 o'clock local time, she'll bring the boys up here after that game is over, hopefully with a victory. Brighton against Cottonwood. The Skoviak boys play for Brighton. Three-point chance for Prince Ali, fouled at the foul line by Caldwell. That's two quick fouls on him. Love the way that Prince Ali, after the going to the bench and being supplanted by Jalen Hands, has responded in a positive manner. Some guys just go in a funk and start complaining, whining, making excuses. <clears throat> but this guy, he comes out and he's delivering. He's playing better ball now than when he started. If he played like this when he was starting, he never would have come out. So it's a seven-point lead for UCLA, trying to get and win number 20. And I love what they've done here at the Huntsman Center by putting this brand-new scoreboard, all the video boards, $4.1 million for all this great equipment, and you can see perfectly from everywhere. It's basically like having Maui gym sunglasses on at all times. This arena, the, the fans are right on top of you. Did you like shooting in these arenas? Would you, would you rather, does it mess at all? With, with your depth perception when it's Fantastic. this tight on you? I love it like this. Come on, this is what you live for. Some of the greatest games ever have been played in this That's building. That's true. Michigan State, Indiana State. Three-pointer by Parker Van Dyke. How about Arizona? It looks like a fullback. How about Arizona Gonzaga in the NCAA tournament? Double overtime victory for the Arizona Wildcats in the early 2000s. Alexander Kaminsky. Or Alex Oleshinsky hitting the uh, three-pointer. Oh, that's right. Alexander Gaminsky was the Russian coach. Hall of Famer. Oleshinsky plays for UCLA. He, he's I've, a sophomore. He just hit that yeah. shot. Roswell, New Mexico is where he's from. I've got Russia on my mind. <laughs> hey, at least you didn't call Aaron Holiday Cameron Dollar yet. <laughs> yet is the operative word. Here's Always. Bibbins. Look at Look at Oleshinsky. Oleshinsky. <laughs> Oh, what did you have for lunch? Don't answer that. <laughs> Wilkes from the corner, no good. Knocked it. And they try to save it, but it's Utah ball. 
Olashinsky, his quickness to the ball, his ability, the only one quicker in the entire land, are the ball boys putting the tiny chairs out for everybody. I love my bike. I love Utah. I love recycling. Renewable energy, University of Utah, the future, here we go. All right, today spent at the Utah Atmospheric Trace Gas and Air Quality Lab with Dr. John, Derek, Ryan, Aaron, Lewis, and Ben, and then all the equipment that they're using to monitor air quality. They have a real problem here with inversion, and, uh, gas, house emissions, and greenhouse gas emissions, and I was trying to fix some of their equipment, which was broken here. And they still need the saw. Hammer, by the way? Yes, I carry it with me at all times. And then they had the screwdriver and try to put it together. Had a great event last night here at the Rice Eccles football stadium. Spence Eccles uh, right next to us here, but we were with, with the UCARE people, the people who were working to clean up the air. And the I care, you care, we all care for you care. The governor was there, Gary Herbert. The lieutenant governor was there, Spencer Cox. Everyone was there. It was a fantastic night. And we just uh, were working on all the opportunities that we can do collectively to solve this air quality problem here. Meanwhile, here uh, in this game, Utah trailing UCLA by seven. David Collette is back on the floor, so that's good news after that awkward landing. He's got eight points. He's four of four from the floor. Traveling is called here on Donnie Tillman. Important game for both teams, given nationally how the Pac-12 is viewed. And we're going to talk more about that when Joe Lenardi, our uh, bracketologist, joins us in the next segment. You're kidding. Get ready. Get ready. He's joining us from his bunker, by the way. Beware of people who admit to living in bunkers. He doesn't live there. He just works there occasionally. Ali in the paint. Got his own miss. Olashinsky has it. Have you ever seen him anywhere but his no. bunker? Okay, so. Wilkes gets it. And a foul. Chris Wilkes. Offensive foul. Offensive foul? Yeah. Are you kidding me? And that's two on Chris Wilkes. You know what's another thing that's sad here in Utah today? Normally when the Bruins come up here, Kevin Morgan, who's J.D. Morgan's son, who lives here, drives the bus for the Bruins all the time. But somehow, some way, Kevin Morgan changed bus companies. That's a backcourt violation. He stepped back over the line. Wow. But to not have Kevin Morgan, just a, a connection to the past for the Bruins. J.D. Morgan, the greatest athletic director in the history of the world. Justin Gibbons drills a three-pointer. You know, he's had a terrific season. He's number two in three-point shooting in the Pac-12 in his only season in the league after transferring from Long Beach State where he was a two-time All-Big West player. Isn't this the Derek White story? Another offensive foul. This one on Chris Smith. That's two charges that Bibbins has drawn in the last minute. All the great things we say about the statistical dominance for Aaron Holiday, you can say the exact same thing about this little man, the little big man, Justin Bibbins. Offense. Defense, although little guys just falling back on the court. I don't really call that defense. I, talk, I call that abusing the rules of human decency. He's got three assists, three points. Utah within four midway through the first. Van Dyke, too strong. Parker Rebounded Van Dyke Smith. has started six of the last eight games. The running Utes have won six of the last eight games. One of my favorite players in the Conference of Champions. Tough pass. You've got to put two hands on that ball to catch it. Well, UCLA has lapses. We saw this against Oregon in the second half. They're also ahead here, please. Steve Alford in his fifth year. Sweet, three Sweet 16s in his first four seasons. Think about the job he's done this year, Bill. They lose Lonzo Ball. They they lose T.J. Leaf to the NBA. Everybody loses their best players. Well, please. They have to go to China, and then that issue happens there where the three players are arrested. He's got to deal with that. They come back. They have to make three separate trips to the East Coast. And you look and you see that they're okay. one away from 20. And so they're like third of the Pac-12. You don't think he's done a good job? He's done an excellent job. Okay, that's all I'm saying. He's done an excellent job. But you make these excuses. And you say that well, winning 20 games is a great accomplishment. Please. 
They play so many games now, the standard should be 25 victories. And everybody wins 20 games. And if you don't like travel, then don't come into this business, because that's what you do. I didn't say they didn't like it. I was just pointing out you were to the viewer. complaining and making excuses. I mean, a lot of people don't realize the I know that you, you, I know that you, you live to get into that TSA line. <laughs> You should try it sometime instead of flying private everywhere. Here's that is Golden. just not true. Backing down Collette, trying to draw the offensive foul, won't get the call. Goldman gets the basket. So with the you run in huge just falling down every defensive possession here, hoping the referees are going to bail him out. That's not Larry Kraskoviak basketball. Larry Kraskoviak, one of the toughest guys ever. Beautiful footwork. And that's Ooh. Golden's handing on Olashinsky, so Collette is 5-5, five of five, 12 points. Great quickness defensively by the Bruins, but the footwork, that's Hakeem Olajuwon, Kevin McHale, Billy the Hill McGill-esque. Keep that pivot foot down. I like that block. Just because the referee can't do something that has just been done doesn't mean it's a violation. So you did not think that was goaltending? It was right out of the guy's hand, please. I did not think that was goaltending. Zone defense here. Look at the job Van Dyke is doing denying Aaron Holiday. You seem surprised. Van Dyke is one of my favorite players in the league. Smith Conference had a trade champion. stripped by Bibbins. Bibbins is everywhere. Head to head, he and Aaron Holiday. Who will be able to sustain? Van Dyke from the corner. Look at Prince Ali climb the ladder, push the ball. Thomas Wells should run right at the basket. Just stop and turn around. Well, not a good shot there by Prince Ali, but Goleman tracks down the loose ball. Would have been fine if it went in. Holiday pulls up. Can't get the three. Look at Thomas Welsh. Third opportunity on this possession alone. And Holiday fouled on the floor. Thomas Wells second in the conference in rebounding behind DeAndre Ayton, the leader as we close it out for player of the year in the conference of champions. Collette for the foul, his first, and a 14 foul. Not a shooting foul? How cool is Sean Holiday, though? Aaron's dad, who I'm told is here tonight. Comes to almost every game, every game that he can. His mom, Toya, did not come tonight. Drew and Justin both playing in the NBA. Lauren unable to play anymore because of a series of concussions suffered while playing at UCLA. Goals oh. way off on the three. Heat check. Watch your face. <laughs> Here's Bivens trying to take Prince Ali. A change of pace, change of direction by little Justin Bivens. Just awesome. Here's Colette. He hasn't missed yet. Five of five from the floor. Two of two at the line. Perfect. And Colette scores again. He's got 14. What a hitch. What footwork. That ability to get momentum by coming back to your opposite shoulder. Finally, this great running new crowd getting into this game. Goleman tries to go baseline. It's cut off by nice. Collette. Goleman does a good job to get to the rim. He's All of that fouled. set up by the fact that Thomas Welsh was moving, that Chris Hill was running without the ball. That is... Tillman call for the foul when we come back. ESPN bracketologist Joe Lenardi in the Infinity Bracket Bunker when we return. No way. Get your head out of the sand. Get out of your cave. I'm saying nine. You're saying nine, and Joe is going to say not nine in a second when he joins us. Right now, SC in the last four in. He's got UCLA and Washington in the first four out. Utah in the next four out. And Joe joins us from the Infinity Bracket Bunker. All right, Joe, Bill has been saying all year nine teams. We know it's not nine. How many teams realistically have a chance to get into the NCAA tournament? Hello, Joe. Are you there? Wake up. Okay, go ahead.
So do you have a hotline to the NCAA committee? How many of these Pac-12 games do you actually watch or do you just read press releases from the, from the preseason? Do you actually watch Pac-12 basketball? Okay. All these teams that you say are going to get in from these other truck stop conferences, if they were in the Pac-12 Conference of Champions, they would be way down at the bottom if they could even get into the Conference of Champions Conference. Please, this is an elite conference in everything. Academics, culture, social, business, and athletics. Can you let Joe answer? He's the guest. That's good. Okay. A, yeah, go ahead, Joe. What do you got, Joe? Why not UCLA? Why not Utah? Bill is so confused right now, Joe. <laughs> but if you follow the Conference of Champions, you would understand that Stanford is an excellent team, Washington is an excellent team, Colorado is an excellent team. How much, Joe, though, as Bill continues here talking about today, how much does November and December matter right now in the eyes of the committee when they look at the Pac-12? Because there weren't a lot of quality wins by the Pac-12 in November, December. Hello, Joe. He'll answer. But those losses are against really good teams. And if you're mopping up on the Sisters of the Poor, how does that qualify you for the NCAA tournament? Please. <laughs> Come on, I just saw on your website. All right, Joe, we appreciate the time. Resumes, resumes, please. Open your eyes, Joe. Pull your head out of the sand. Come out of your bunker. Get out of the cave. Thank you, come Joe. Out, come out here to the Conference of Champions. You don't even return my calls anymore. You must have changed your number. So by Donnie Tillman has scored the last five points, and the Utes lead by three for the first time. And Donnie Tillman just looks to the sky and says, Joe Lenardi, that's in your face. By the way, Lenardi's name means great proclaimer. Did you know that? As the three goes for Chris Smith, that's in your face as the game is tied at 29. Is that another one of those faux controversies that you're trying to start? Please. Did he change his name? Now that's what it means in Italian. Really? Did you see the great Walter Isaacson story about Bivens hits a three about Michelangelo, who was Italian as well? That was just brilliant. I was studying for the game as uh, the Utes have uh, now four threes in the game, two by Bivens. He's got 72 on the year, second most of the conference. Out of bounds, it'll stay with UCLA. Penetration, get the ball against that zone defense to the high post, swing it to the weak side. Yes, Utah basketball, Larry Kriskoviak, capably supported by Andy Hill and Tommy Connor, legendary coaches. Wow. Goldman tries to throw it off of Johnson. Jace Johnson looks tremendous. So happy his foot's feeling better. Rawson from outside. He hits a triple. Steve Hall for UCLA. Steve Alford needs a timeout. I need a drink after Joe Lenardi. Please pass me some water. Today, National Margarita Day. National California Day. Dr. J's birthday. Let's get this party rolling.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Chobani. Pick your favorite yogurt at Chobani.com. And how I wish Tom Crean were here right now. I as love we Tom look, Crean. We look at I, some, I, I wish you were here, too. <laughs> <laughs> I got a seat right here for you, Tom. Come on out any time. Virginia clinches at least a share of the regular season uh, title in the ACC. This is not good news in the middle for Arizona no, or not. the Conference of Champions. And then big one in the Big 12, uh, Kansas and Texas Tech Saturday, 4:15 on ESPN. Texas Tech has dropped two straight at Baylor and at Oklahoma State. We'll see if they can rebound against the Jayhawks, a team they beat at Fog Allen earlier this year. Thomas Welsh out of the timeout, the immortal Irishman. Have you ever stood on the banks of a river while millions of your fellow countrymen were starving to death, while the occupying army in your home country was taking all the food out that would have kept you and your countrymen alive? Yes. Here's Rawson for three. It's good. Another triple for Rawson and the six three pointer for the Utes. Ty Rawson, the glue guy for Larry Kriskoviak. The playmaker as a big man, second tallest guy who plays regularly. And it's the littlest guy in the court that gets the rebound. It's not how big you are, it's how big you play. Throw it down. How about the energy that Tillman brings to the table off the bench? So happy that he's been able to recover fully from that stress fracture. This is my fifth Utah game this year. This is his best game by far. Well, Aaron Holiday, such a terrific shooter. 51% from three in conference games, the best. And his dad, Sean, is the patriarch of Southern California's most accomplished basketball factory. Family, excuse me. Congratulations, Sean and Toya. Called well. Gets it back out to Bibbins. Inside three minutes to play here in the first half. Change of pace, change of direction. Well, he's so good at that. Missed the shot, though. Rebounded by Welsh. Like Steve Nash. Like Aaron Holliday. Like Cameron Dollar. Hands drills a triple. Penetration and dish. What I want to see more from UCLA playmakers, penetrators, dribblers, ball handlers, Kraskoviak wants a timeout here, is those guys drive the ball at Thomas Welsh's man, at Alex Olashinsky's man, and at Gigi Goleman's man to set up wide open spot up shots. That'll be gold. Saturday, 4.15 Eastern, the game that could determine the Big 12 regular season championship, Kansas and Texas Tech in a sonic blockbuster. Then after that, Duke and Syracuse. Man, Duke is playing terrific without Marvin Bagley right now. Grayson Allen running the point guard. And then Syracuse on the bubble, lost at home to North Carolina. This would obviously be big for the Orange if they can win that game. Speaking of Duke, Larry Kraskoviak is one of 118 players who have ever had more than 2,000 points and more than 1,000 rebounds in their career. Utah has three such players. Larry did it for Montana. UCLA has one such player. Duke, the record holder with four of those guys. 2,000 plus points, 1,000 rebounds. Christian Leitner, Mike Jaminski, Danny Ferry, and Kyle Singler. Congratulations, Coach K. What a developer of human potential and talent. Meanwhile, Aaron Holiday picked up a second foul, which That's is big nightmare. news. That's a nightmare for Steve Alford, whose dad coached Jerry Seasting in Martinsville High School, John Wooden's high school. Traveling violation on Utah. Jerry Seasting, one of my best friends and greatest teammates and current assistant coach for the fabulous and surging New York Knicks. I thought you said Scott Webbin was your best friend and your no. favorite teammate. No, no, no. I said one of. Please, I don't live in this qualitative binary decision-making world that you do. It's not yes or no. It's yes, maybe, you, hopefully. You live in a, an infinite gray area. Here's hands in the paint. Oh, he could have taken the ball to the rim that yeah, time. Instead, he passed it out. Thomas Wells, so good. So quick to anticipate where the ball's going next. Hands waving through traffic. A sloppy <laughs> possession. Hand says, I don't care. I'm going to shoot the ball. And then the foul is called on Gigi Golem, and that's the 17th foul on UCLA. Confusion reigning supreme for the Bruins. Going to be a one-and-one one on the other end for Utah. Second personal on Goleman. Have you ever been on a 
running Ute Indian bear hunt where they've got the bear on the run and they force him up into a canyon where there's nothing but rock walls and so there's no escape. Oh my gosh, that's where the Bruins are feeling right now. Alex Olashinsky back on the floor and uh, Tyler Rawson at the line shooting one and one, 79% free throw shooting. How great is it to see, though, Kyle Kuzma just coming into his own as a real NBA star with the NBA marketing machine, one of the 10 most innovative companies in the world today. That company, that list was just released this week. I was shocked that no energy companies were on that list of innovation. Nike, uh, Nike was up there, Apple was up there, all these Conference of Champions companies. Meanwhile, it's a four-point game for Utah. Nearing a minute to go. You don't believe in innovation, do you? Ali, well, this is beautiful. Shinsky working the glass. Did you say it was a pass? It was a pass. And it's a two-point game with a minute remaining. You ever, have you ever been on a team where you're like supposed to help your teammates? Here's Parker Van Dyke. Bruins very lucky to have gotten back into this game here. 11 offensive rebounds by UCLA. Big reason why the Bruins are down just two. Bibbins got the defender off the spear. It's a three point. When this guy first started this season, I was not a believer. These last two games at Arizona State and now here hosting the Bruins tonight. Wow, was I ever wrong? Come on, you got to pass the ball, Prince Ali. Alex Olashinsky, not Alex Gomilski, was wide open. And the shot clock at 10, about a 12-second difference between the clocks here at the end of the first half. Take him. Get to the hoop. There and you hands. go. Kicks it out. Wells off target. Gibbons tracks down the loose ball. A lot of time. Gibbons <laughs> driving, gets to the rim, puts it on that glass. Bruins, poor transition defense. Wow. Utah with a seven-point lead at halftime. Great game. Conference of champions. Joe Lenardi, stay awake. Watch real basketball. Utah shooting 64% from the floor. 7 of 13 from three-point land. Kevin Connors, Dallin Cup, Tom Crean coming up after the break. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. Utah in front of UCLA thanks to 64% shooting against the Bruins, which have the number one defense in conference games in the Pac-12. Dave Pash, Hall of Famer Bill Walton. Are Utah, life elevated, basketball elevated. It's all happening right here in Salt Lake City. What a game. And tonight we're brought to you by... Yeah, our winning mix is brought to you by Chibani, and that's Utah's inside-outside game. Here what was your game. name again? Roxy. Hi. I'm Bill, two L's. Shomani, yeah, let's go. Penetration and disc, championship level basketball. Throw it down, Dave Collette, oldest player in the conference. He is six for six, he is on an incredible offensive tear. And then when Justin Bibbins wasn't setting it up, he was finishing his ability to move without the ball. And this guy, He's a lot like John Mayer, he's a lot like Michael Jordan, he's a lot better than we thought, and he keeps improving all the time. Utah 7 of 13 for three-point land, Aaron Holiday at seven points. All early though. Yeah. And, and, and the Bruins fell apart late there. This game is critical. Both of these teams, Utah and UCLA, are battling for the seeds in the Pac-12 Conference of Champions Tournament. And for spots in the NCAA tournament. All right, well, and then you don't know what's going to happen with Arizona. You know, Lonzo Trier can't play anymore. That really puts a, a, a damper on their season. And then the winner of the tournament, they get the automatic seed. Automatic bid, you mean? Yeah, okay, bid seed. Offensive foul on Collette on the screen. That's two on him. Collette is six of six from the floor, by the way, in his last five games. He's shooting 86% from what, the field. What is the NCAA record for most consecutive shots made? I don't think he's going to get it tonight, but I'm not sure what it is. He's at six believe, right now. I believe the NBA record. Well, well, well in the game, the national championship game, where you missed one shot, you were 21 to 22. How many in a row did you make? I don't know. We won the game. So maybe it's you. Maybe you're the record holder and you don't even know. No. Well, you missed one shot. It was a national title game. So obviously you had a, a lengthy streak at some point. We won the game. 
please. I think that NBA record was is 18 by Will. Dolan misses on the low block. Arizona leads the conference, as you mentioned. He, and the Wildcats are two games up on USC and UCLA in the loss column. So without Trier, who is Sean Miller going to play? I want to see Brandon Randolph in there. That guy, he's got talent. He's got potential. Well, we'll find out Saturday. We have them uh, in Eugene Saturday night, 10-15 Eastern on ESPN. That duck crowd, black, black. They'll be fired up as can be. They, oh, they should have won. They could have won that game in Tucson. Hands, and that is out the foot of uh, Utah. Park Parker Van Dyke is everywhere. Van Dyke challenged by Holiday, but the basket counts. It's a nine-point game. You cannot play that any better than Parker Van Dyke did. And what Kraskoviak did in putting him in the starting lineup and realizing it's about chemistry more than talent. This guy's got a ton of talent. He's a different player than a lot that we see today. Very similar to, to a Bob Gross for the Portland Trailblazers. Wells wow. in and out of the three. Thomas Wells' shot is not falling tonight. It's one of the few times in his illustrious career, the immortal Lifeman, that it hasn't just been automatic. They're under 40% now shooting as a team on the night. When you couple that How many has he missed? Oh, beautiful. Justin Simmons. This is a clinic by the running youths. Pound those Tyco drums up there. Bibbins now at eight assists here tonight. Where's the on-court leadership going to come from for the Bruins? The competitive response has to be now. They go to Welsh, but he can't finish, and UCLA gets a score here in the second half. That's a tough way to plan your comeback. Crisp ball movement. Rawson's a terrific playmaker for a big, and oh. Collette lost it off his head. Utah's ball movement has been superb, and you think of the history of this great program, starting with Jack Gardner, the lone member of Utah basketball family in history that's ever made it to the Hall of Fame. Jack Gardner, who learned how to play from his Hall of Fame coach, Sam Barry, the guy who started all this movement, passing, team game so many decades ago in the 30s and the 40s. UCLA 0 for 5 in the half from the field, scoreless through three minutes. And they don't look like they have any life. You've got to come to fight. You've got to come to outwork. You've got to come to outrun your opponent. Field throws a three to make it a 14-point game. Timeout, UCLA. Wow. Where's Kevin Morgan when he needed to drive the bus in this crowd? They sense blood. They're throwing t-shirts into the crowd, and this mighty Utah student section is salivating. This is Utah basketball. Well, Utah is one of the hottest teams in the Pac-12 right now, and even though Joe Lenardi has them, as we talked to him earlier, in the next four out group, Cave Dweller, they have a chance to still get in. They've won four in a row. And if they win the night, it'll be 8 out of 10. And they have all their games left here at home. This is all one right. of the toughest places to play, college basketball. The Huntsman Center, you got the elevation here in Salt Lake City. Elevation, they life elevated, Utah. Come on, we love it all. But one of the coolest things about Larry Kraskovia, talk about the resume, please. Well, I was going to say, their quality wins include at Arizona State. This would be a quality win. And they have USC on Saturday if they get that one as well. You put that in the quality win category. And give a ton of credit from Larry Kraskoviak, who along with his wife Jan, who was hopefully back here from a victorious high school game tonight with their three children, they are conducting a raffle for the student section. The must, the mighty you student section. And they're going to have a raffle on senior day, and they're going to pick three winners. The first winner, they get free tuition here at the university. The second winner gets free half tuition, and the third winner gets $1,000. And how cool is that of Larry and Jan Kraskoviak to step up and say, we're taking care of our own here in Utah. That's what this great Beehive State is all about. Well, you saw Thomas Welsh getting the basket out of the timeout. That's the third time that's happened. You wonder if Steve Alvarez trying to send a message to the rest of the team, like, let's not just get him the ball out of timeouts. Feed him more often. 
but eventually you have to be able to do that in the course and flow of the game. You can't just call a timeout. Well, that's it's what I'm saying. It's not like they go to a center jump at the end of every basket. Hands can't get the three, rebounded by Beeler. That's exactly what I said. They, he's trying to tell the rest of the team, get him the ball more. Been saying that for four years. Well, she averaging 14 points. How 13 cool. points, 11 rebounds how, on the season. How, Beeler's three. How cool is it that Jerry Sloan is here tonight, the Hall of Famer who coached Larry Kriskoviak in the NBA, Utah Jazz. Has Popovich passed Jerry Sloan for longest tenured coach yet? I'd have to check. Here's Beeler driving, can't get it, rebounded by Olashinsky. Olashinsky just always in the right place at the right time. Somebody's got to start making some shots. Offense wins championships, please. Count the basket, hands a three-point opportunity. Speaking of uh, Greg Popovich, what do you make of the Kawhi Leonard situation? What's Hold the story? What's the story? I'll fill you in if you haven't been paying attention and watching I'll sports. Always paying attention. Work. Center follows us on ESPN. John Butchagras, Zubin Mahenti will take an in-depth look at the second half of the NBA season. More on that in a second. Tiger Woods, the latest on him with the Masters six weeks away. And Bill Walton going to be featured on Sports Center. That's coming up next. Uh, so Greg Popovich said yesterday okay. that he doesn't expect Kawhi Leonard back. Leonard has been cleared, right. but battling an injury. Bill is someone who missed a lot of NBA time in your career because of injury. Nine sure and a half full years. And I'm sure at times was told by people you're healthy enough to play. <laughs> right? At okay. Times. But what about this situation? With What do you make of it if you're Greg Popovich in the Spurs? What are you thinking right now when a player is cleared to play but doesn't want to? Greg Popovich is as classy a person as I've ever come across in my life. As smart and as concerned and caring for his beloved players as anyone. He always has his players' best interests at heart, and that's a tough deal to be a boss in an incredibly competitive and incredibly physical sport. So he's looking out for Kawhi Leonard long term, and that's a great thing. And that's going to pay dividends for the Spurs long term. Congratulations and thank you, Greg Popovich. Parker Van Dyke with a big three-pointer as the Bruins were starting to gain momentum. My days, I don't know how your day started, but my day started in the hotel lobby with Beethoven's Sonata Pathetique second movement. And it has been beautiful ever since. I love Utah. Thomas Welsh finally answers with a three, and that is the 34th three-pointer for the season for him. He had one in his career coming into the year. Bruins in his own defense of their own. The high post, Ty Ross and his ability to catch, receive, shoot, dribble, drive, deliver a pass. That makes it really difficult to play zone against Utah. Seeley inside, a very promising player. Glad that his gallbladder is fine now. And Dyke missing. Whoa. Holiday tried to save it. Tough play for the Bruins. Not the kind of play that leads to victory. On the Chris Seeley story, he had gallbladder surgery in November. How's yours doing? It's actually doing pretty well, thank you. Here's uh, the so Seeley down. with the jam. Van Dyke with a great pass along the baseline. Everything Van Dyke does on the basketball court is positive. He could play for the Celtics. He could play for the Spurs. He could play for the Warriors. He's chosen to play in his home state of Utah. Guy that just lives for basketball, Parker Van Dyke. Pete Maravich, his favorite player ever. They get Seeley for the foul, his first. The ball movement, drive the baseline, and they just lay it off, throw it down. Horrendous defensive rotation by the Bruins. And you have to be moving as a unit. And it's not as if Parker has been lighting it up from the perimeter. Tough shot by Holiday. Welsh gets the offensive rebound. Love offensive rebounds that are kicked back out. Problem is, even though Ali drew the foul, we're seeing a lot of isolation. A lot of one-on-one -on -one by the Bruins right now. Hey, give the credit to Utah's defense. I mean, they are forcing the Bruins to play set-up offense. True. Tillman picking up his second foul. 14 foul in Utah. So Prince Ali, only a 62% free throw shooter on the year at the line. More college basketball on Saturday in the Big 12. It's a big game. Will Texas Tech 
unseat Kansas as the regular season champ of the Big 12. 13 straight years the Jayhawks have won it. They've already lost to Texas Tech. And they bounce back. And then Syracuse Duke to follow at 6.15 on ESPN. Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Boy, Grayson Allen has been playing terrific basketball with Marvin Bagley out of the lineup right now. Now, how long is Marvin going to be out? Well, they don't know. They don't he's know got a knee injury, right? I don't know if he'll be back for Saturday's game. You can only hope that he's doing fine. That guy's a real talent. Look at that crossover. My gosh. Bivens can't get it, though. Critical time here for the Bruins. They might need to go to Mark Eaton, who's here in attendance tonight. Mark Eaton, the Bruin legend from years gone by. He used up his eligibility 25 years ago. Wilkes missed the three. He lives right here in Park City. Doing very well. He's got a new book coming out. Rawson can't get it. Look at Chris Wilkes climb the ladder. Push the ball. Bruins don't seem to be playing with the normal fire that we expect from him. Olashinsky can't connect. But with Tyler Rawson playing fantastic, Dave Collette superb, Justin Bibbins dominating the both ends of the court here, what's the path forward to victory for the Bruins? You're the one that's got to find that path forward. You're Acknowledge your problems. Why don't you tell me what the Bruins okay. need to do to well, get back Well, start, start with some fire. I don't see the passion. I don't see the commitment to outrunning your opponent, to outworking your opponent. Bivens with three on the timer, kicks it out, Van Dyke. And rebounded by Olashinsky. But when they get that rebound, they're forced into a setup play, and that's not their strength of their game. And the, the first couple of minutes that, of this game tonight, they were good at it. But since then, they've just been kind of standing around and having to take perimeter shots that are not falling. Good defense again by Utah. Parker Holiday corrals and puts it in. Seven-point game here in Salt Lake. Both teams on the NCAA tournament bubble coming into tonight. Both teams on winning streaks. Utah four in a row, UCLA two in a row, and six of seven. Bubbles. I love bubbles. I love it when you're out there at the park and you have the bubble machines. Great footwork by Ty Rossum. That is classic Utah basketball. Ball fake, exquisite footwork, jump hook. The jump hook was invented. Holiday, a three. Invented by number 12 up there, the retired numbers. Billy the Hill McGill, a Los Angeles native who invented the jump hook in a pickup game in the playgrounds of Los Angeles against Wilk Chamberlain in the 50s. That'd be the 1950s. How about Aaron Holiday starting to get going now? He's got 12 points, five assists. The Bruins within six midway through the second half. Bivens comes back, can't hit the three. Signs of life for the Bruins here. Push the ball, get to the free throw line. Why are you dribbling into the corner? Offensive foul. He sent it the other way. Yeah, extended that off arm right in front of Vern Harris. All right. Bruins with signs of life. Maybe it will be the tiny chairs that help them during this timeout. Top 10 teams, one Big 12 blockbuster. Yes! Kansas, Texas Tech, Saturday at 4.15 on ESPN. That's a big game, obviously, on Saturday with Kansas right now, a game up on Texas Tech. Anytime Kansas plays, it's a big game. Right now, Joel Lenardi, your boy, has him as a number one seed, along with Xavier, Villanova, and Virginia. The two seeds, Duke, Purdue, Michigan State, which is one of the hottest teams in the country, 11 straight wins, and Auburn. What a job that Bruce Pearl has done with that team. I want to give credit to the job our team has done in coming up with that record for the most consecutive shots made in NCAA Division I basketball history. It was just done two years ago by Brandon Sherrod of Yale. Sherrod, Sherrod, I don't know. I haven't done a Yale game in a while. They're going to China for the Pac-12 China initiative next year against Berkeley. Yeah, that's the men's record. But, but 30, well, this is a men's game here, please. 30 straight shots by Brandon Sherrod. That's, that, that's phenomenal. 30 straight shots in competition. You know who has the record for most consecutive free throws ever made in competition in basketball history? I don't. John Wooden, 138. 
Did he used to show you guys up in practice at the foul line? No, nope. never shot once, never handled the ball. He just spoke very quietly and softly. That's where I got it from. Tillman misses. And UCLA with a chance to make it a four-point game, maybe get it down to three here. Goldman on the paint, goes up, can't get it. Got to finish, GG. GG, so much talent, so good. Find the fire within. Beautiful pass, Ty Rawson. And wow. Tillman, boy, it looked like there was some contact. That's an offensive foul. And it is called on Ali, his second foul. So good news for Utah fans. The Kraskoviak boys, they won their game by 14. They're not here yet. They've got school tomorrow morning. Jan probably wow. dropped them at home. Drive down the lane, the great cut. Uh, that's that is a great a block. That's a foul. He grabbed his arm. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go sit next to Mrs. Huntsman. Her husband, John, died. he was only 81 years old. Is your dad still alive? He is. Mine passed away 15 years ago at 83. Thank you, Dad, for the greatest life ever. Time to go to work, Dave Collette. Use some Utah footwork. Look at the hit. Look at them back him down. Gets in the free throw line. That's Conference of Champions basketball. No truck stops here. He hasn't missed yet. He's 7 of 7 from the floor and 2 of 2 at the line. Olashinsky commits the foul. His first third team foul in UCLA. You know Andy Hill, the great assistant coach for Moscovia? He, yes, he grew up in Spokane, which is John Stockton's hometown. And John Stockton played his entire pro career here. Found by Jack Gardner, the Hall of Famer here. So this little Andy Hill, right? He was a bartender for two years at Jack and Dan's, the Stockton's family bar. How cool is that? Have you ever been there? Have you ever made a pilgrimage to Jack and Dan's? I've been to Spokane, but not to Jack and Dan's. Well, not so yet. Jack, John's dad, he passed away fairly recently. But they still got it going. I, I have been to Jack and Dan's. And it was one of the most remarkable experiences of my life. Aaron Holliday gets the floater and makes it a five-point game. It's He's starting to catch fire now, 14 points. Don't wait too long if you're UCLA, because Utah's offense, they're going to keep going. It's as if Justin Bibbins is just toying with this UCLA defense. Get that change of pace, change of direction. Great pass. Get it right back. Colette is just too strong, too good. And another Bruin foul, fourth team foul on UCLA. Coming up tomorrow, we've got an NBA doubleheader for you at 8 Eastern. It's the Wolves and Rockets. First time the Houston Rockets have ever had the best record in the NBA at the All-Star break. They open up the second, quote, half of the season tomorrow night. And then you got the Mavs and Lakers. Lonzo Ball, former Bruin, could play in that game. And former Ute, Kyle Kuzma, obviously, of the Lakers. That's our second game of our NBA Friday doubleheader. How smart of Adam Silver to give the NBA all the way till Thursday before resuming play. Mike D'Antoni, I got to see him at NBA All-Star Weekend. It was awesome. He's my hero. Caldwell misses. Loose ball tracked down by Holiday. Here comes UCLA. I saw a lot of my heroes there, including Bill Russell and Jerry West. Got a Utah foul. Five-point game here in Salt Lake City. And what a night here at the Huntsman Center. That's Karen Huntsman, John Huntsman's wife. That jersey is there because John and Karen have donated so much money to everything good in Utah. Fantastic. John and Karen, they have nine children. They have 56 grandchildren and 26 great-grandchildren. Thank you for what you've done for all of us Huntsman fans. Aaron Holiday, beautiful hang and finish, contorts his body. Again, out of the timeout. This time it was Holiday, not Welsh, and it's so, a three-point game. So the Bruins would be much better if they were playing by the old rules, where you stopped after every made basket. You mean old, old rule? Please. Like hundreds of years. Utah 0 for its last five. They go to Colette, who is yet to miss. He's got 17 points. Corner three, not there. Rebound, Goldman. The accurate count is 127 years. Please. It was December 21st, 1891, the same year that Stanford University started. And they started their endowment the very next year, Stanford did. 
Make a layup, please. Smith thought he was fouled. Ty Rawson. You always think you're fouled when you miss a shot. Please. Dealer in the corner this time elects not to shoot the three. Did you ever play a pickup basketball game against Magic Johnson? Yes. If the shot missed, it was a foul. Where's the creativity going to come from? Right here, Dave Collette. Look at the footwork, the ball movement. And Collette is 8 of 8 from the floor. What a night. This guy, Brandon Sherrod, he's in trouble. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Only 22 more to go for Collette. <laughs> How do you pronounce S-H-E-R-R-O-D? Sherrod, Sherrod. Oh, nice drive. Holiday misses once. What a play to tip it in. As the season goes on, we are seeing more and more of Aaron Holiday's game. If you see a three-point shooter, but look at him drive if, and rebound. If you see had won that game at Arizona State, if they had won their home game against Colorado, they would be right there in first place. And with Arizona on the road, beautiful pass, Dave Collette. Beeler's three. In and out, but there's Collette with the rebound and the putback. He's nine for nine. Spectacular. He has taken it to Thomas Welsh here tonight. Thomas Welsh will be a first-team All-Pac-12 player. But right now, it's Dave Collette who's taken it to him. Gigi, too passive. Now that's a foul. Yep. He'll go to the line for two. That is the 16th foul on Utah. Dave Collette, the footwork, the balance, the skill, most importantly, the mindset, pursuit of that ball, persistence, discipline. No one will deny Dave Collette tonight. And he's, he's coming from out of bounds. Best I ever saw at that, Paul Silas, and then ultimately Dennis Rodman. But Dennis Rodman was different because Dennis was not interested in anything other than the statistical garnering of that ball. Well, he had a lot of interests outside basketball. A, well, a, a well-rounded person. That's one way to put it. Rebounded by Collette, who again, he's married, and his wife is due the week of the Pac-12 tournament. Speaking of children, I got a call today from Nate, our second son, a Conference of Champions member. He was doing the money deals in San Francisco in the morning and speaking at Stanford Business School, the Phil Knight School of Business, where he went to college about 11 or 12 years ago, and he was the guest speaker at the Phil Knight Stanford School of Business today. Another Nothing news, like the Goleman pride of a dad. The, You're a dad, right? Uh, Gigi Goleman with his fourth foul. You're proud of your children, Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Nate's the billionaire, right? Nate's, do <laughs> Nate's doing very well. I'm a very <laughs> proud dad. <laughs> Time out here. I'm also a solar guy, and I really love what they're doing here in Utah with their solar. Wow. 6,000 solar professionals here in the Beehive State. All right, uh, we'll transition from that to uh, a look at the Wendy's Wooden Watch. So you don't believe in energy. I'm a Wooden Award candidate because of my family, my friends, my teammates, my coach, my work ethic, and I have a chip on my shoulder. Go Devils. Trey Holder has had a terrific season at Arizona State, 500 in the league, so you have to think right That's now. That's because it's a really tough league. Well, DeAndre Ayton and Aaron Holiday, they're at the forefront for the Pac-12 right. Player of the Year, Alonzo Trier, if he is deemed eligible, if Arizona wins the appeal. Uh, it's possible he could get back in the conversation with Ayton and Holiday. Who's your pick, or are you not picking yet? I'm going to wait to see who wins the, the conference. Not the tournament, but the regular season. My pick today would be DeAndre Ayton. I'd like to see Arizona use him more beautiful extension. Look at that run. That's John Stockton. That's Norm Nixon, Duquesne University. Saw Norm at All-Star Weekend. Wish that the NBA would have honored him. Holiday off balance. It won't fall, but he was fouled. He'll shoot two. Van Dyke with the fouls first. Justin Bibbins from Carson, California. Right there where they parked the blimp where the Stub Hub, Home Depot Center, whatever it is, that incredible complex for sports, AEG, building that thing, wow. You know that, that game here on Saturday when USC comes in? 
That's going to be a 12.30 p.m. game right, right yeah. in the afternoon, half hour after lunchtime. Right? Quick turnover. Right, Quick so turnover. it'll be over, and then everybody who will come to that game, they'll be able to go skiing. Because Snowbird is just 20 minutes away, and the snow that they had here the other night, Sunday and Monday, the fans are just going to have the time of their life. It stays light here until 7 p.m. already. Throw it down. Throw it down. Beeler hangs, can't finish, but it'll go to the line. Can you ski, by the way? Are you allowed to ski? No, I can't. Look, I have fused ankles. I, I hate cold weather. <laughs> Beeler at the line shooting two Welsh with his first foul and the 16th foul in the Bruins. Larry Kraskoviak, his knees are doing fantastic. It was wonderful to talk to him today. And he just, he feels so good. You can just see it in his face how happy he is that the pain has gone away. In the gym every day at the Huntsman facility over there. Pumping the iron, riding the stationary bike. He got down in his catcher stance today. Jerry Sloan and Mark Eaton right there. Jerry was down at the game at Pro Bowl at BYU. What a legend. Hall of Famer Jerry Sloan. Mark Eaton still has NBA records for block shots. Great Brooks driving. Gets the bounce. It's a four-point game. When you're the, the defender on that play, that would have been uh, Tyler Rawson. You've got to get your sternum on that guy's sh left shoulder coming at you and not let him continue his rhythm. But knowing Ty Rawson, he's going to come right back and get it on the offensive end. Tillman in the lane, lost the handle, turnover Utah. Jalen Hands hit some big shots this year. Not yeah. that time. And Welsh knocked it out of bounds. It's Utah ball. Thomas Welsh is an exquisite offensive rebounder, and he rarely fouls. He knows exactly how tall he is. This ball comes to the long. Rebound there, and that's Beeler. Beeler right there. I think Beeler touched it last, but obviously we're outside two minutes, so you can't go to the monitor to review that. Here, check the rules. Acknowledge your problems. Find your path forward. You love coal. I'm a solar guy. I'm in Utah. Read your flashcards. That rule sheet is for you, by the way. Really? Timer at five. <laughs> And what a play by Hands to strip Rawson. But then he turns it right back over, trying to go one on four. Parker Van Dyke everywhere, always in the right place at the right time. That's why Utah's a winning team. And Parker's calling this crowd out. Oh, look how fired up he is. What a competitor. What a great dude. Local hero makes good. The hometown hero. Timer at seven. Bibbins puts it on the deck. Got caught in the air. Rawson unable to knock it down. Poor possession by Utah. You have to continue your, mo your momentum. I mean, that's what sustainability is all about. Keep it going. Timeout. Aaron Holiday is trying to call a timeout. Can't even get the ball up the court. UCLA two games back of Arizona in the loss column for the top spot of the Pac-12. Welsh with a big shot, a three to make it a one-point game. Now that is the immortal Irishman at his best. It has not been his game tonight. Missed a lot of shots early. Be at your best when your best is needed. And right now, Chris Kobiak wants to make sure that these running Utes can close this deal. Time out, time for the middle chairs. And Bill is going to join you, Bucci. It's, uh, I don't know if it's wait, the wait, best wait, of Walton's world. I think it's on tape. You, I don't know Nobody if you have to do something said live anything or not. To me. I've got a speaking engagement after the show here tonight. You're still on the clock until you leave the arena. By the way, Arizona, which is playing right now at Oregon State, is up in the loss column by two games on SC and UCLA. Utah trying to win its fifth straight tonight. Both the Bruins and Utes are on the bubble. Joe Lenardi has UCLA the first four out, Utah the next four out. One point game. I'm going with all of those teams, minimum, in the Conference of Champions for the NCAA Tournament. Stop. Why? 
Utes with possession, two and a half minutes to go. This has been a great season of Conference of Champions basketball. Every game we've had has been superb, excellent, and fought all the way to the final minute. Timer is down Look to four. That. Van Look Dyke spots up. Yeah. And buries a three. Parker Van Dyke. Playing like Nate Duda, the walk-on from Boston for the running Eugene Larry Kristovic, who made the half-court shot to end practice today. Lawson with a great steal. The Duda man, yeah, trucking. Here we go. This atmosphere unmatched around the rest of the country with all the other truck stops. Then the shot clock inside 10 seconds. They go to go. Collette, Beeler, and he was oh. fouled by Welsh. That is a very tough call. That was a self-check. The guy blocked his own shot on the bottom of the backboard. Beeler did. And he got pushed, according to the official. All right, Kansas, Texas Tech, Saturday 4-15. It could determine the Big 12 regular season champ. Texas Tech has lost two in a row coming in. One at Kansas earlier this season, first time in 18 tries. And then Syracuse Duke, 6-15. Eastern, see if Marvin Batley the third is back in that game for Duke. And then we'll have Arizona, Oregon at 10:15 Eastern top Saturday night. So you've been following the Winter Olympics in Korea? Yes. Have you? That's a question. Yes. Okay. You know who Damian Myers is? Yes. Okay, who is he? You're talking about Damian Myers He's from Utah, for right? SID yes. for, for yes. Utah. What does that have to do with this game, which is uh, now at six points? He spent five and a half years in Korea in our U.S. Army at the DMZ zone, okay? That's what this has to do with this game tonight. And if you would learn anything about sacrifice and discipline and team, you might understand things like that. Please. There's Wilkes out to Goldman. And now Wilkes for three. Hits wow. it. Bruins competitive response. Steve Alford, timeout after the made basket. When is the NCAA going to change this rule? that the team that doesn't have the ball can, time, can call timeout. They have one remaining, Utah with one as well. Penetration and dish, championship basketball. Gigi Golamon, the visionary, the playmaker. If Gigi would only understand that you have to embrace and accept risk. You know, he, fear of failure is an important motivator in your life. But if you're not willing to accept that you might fail, then you're really never gonna make it to the top. And that is really a limiting factor in Gigi's game. But the contribution that he's made, David Grace patting him on the back saying, come on, Gigi, keep going here. We're right there. And the critical import of this game, because these two teams are third and fourth in the Conference of Champions. The team that finishes third <laughs> will not have to play Arizona if Arizona can find a way to keep winning without Alonzo Trier. Right it's now. all up in the air right now. Certainly. Right now, Joel Lenardi has Arizona a four seed, ASU a six seed, SC last four in. But Arizona State has not played well since the conference started. That's why I asked that, Joel about those that, games in November. That's December. why the, 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 his whole argument makes absolutely zero sense. Utah will break the press and now will slow it down. Holiday defending Bibbins near midcourt with a minute to go. And the shot clock down to 10. Now they got the switch. Goldman on Bivens. Tough mismatch here. Should have kept his dribble. Van Dyke. Now the timer. They're three. up against it. They're up against it. Van Dyke has to put it up. Oh! <laughs> what a night for Van Dyke. That is a dagger. Goldman trying to answer. Yes! Does with a three. Right back. Pull the dagger out. Stop the bleeding. UCLA it, doesn't have to foul here. Terrible pass. Utah oh. gets it across. It got Boy. deflected. There's about a five-second difference between the game and shot clock to see if the UCLA Bruins foul. They do. Or Bibbins will go to the line. Wasted a lot of time there. They either foul right away when you don't get the steal, right? We or don't foul at all. I concur. But things have gotten serious. Larry Kruskoviak has taken his jacket off. So Bibbins at the line where he's the number two free throw shooter in the Pac-12 at 88%. He has not attempted a free throw tonight. He's made his last 14, though, from the strike. 
And how about Parker Van Dyke tying a career high with 16 points, four point game. And Parker, he went to the same high school as one of those three running youths who has 2,000 points plus and 1,000 plus rebounds. That high school, East High School in Salt Lake City here. This must be the place. Great free throw shooting by Justin Bivens. Oh, and lost yeah. the ball, turns it over. Now the Bruins have to foul. They grab Collette. Things looking good for the Utes on their way to their fifth straight win. And for the running Utes and the doodah man, sometimes the light's all shining on me. And for Steve Alford, sometimes I can barely see. Yikes. A win for Utah that could go a long way to determining whether they make the NCAA tournament. They have two games remaining. They're both here. SC Saturday at 12.30 local time. Oh, is that Colorado his first next week. Of the night? It is. He made every shot prior to that. Holiday comes back and hits a three. Maybe I spoke too soon. It's a two-point game with 9.4 left. What a turn of events. And that's why this is the Conference of Champions. Anything could happen. If you're Utah, get a good inbounder and throw the ball up the court. Don't try one of those lazy, sloppy, fear-ridden passes into, the, into your own deep corner. Aaron Holiday, how good is this guy? 16 points in the second half for Holiday to make it a two-point game. The value of older siblings who toughen you up in the driveway. Aaron Holiday, as tough as they come, plays the whole game, does everything, guards everybody, makes all the huge plays when it seems like all is lost. He still is a believer. Now Utah does have a timeout. If uh, the Utes have trouble getting the ball in bounds, they can call one. But Colette, to your point, the guy was not, actually, he had missed a, another free throw earlier, but he still has a miss from the floor. He's 9 of 9 for the floor, 3 of 5 at the line. Obviously, that last one was big. Four-point swing. 9.9 .9 on the clock. Utah will have to inbound under its own basket. So who will be able to run the floor. I'd have Tyler Ross to throw it in. And I'd have, you cannot advance the ball, which is another rule that needs to be changed. But... Dave Collette post him at the free throw line, flash to the ball, not to the corner. Have some one wing guy to go deep, have the other guys at half court really spread the floor, and then put that ball on a high, hard pass to somebody who's getting in the air to grab it, snatch it, and then move it on to the next guy before the Bruins can foul. Well, I was going to say, Bill, if you're UCLA, do you foul immediately on the inbound if you don't get a steal, or do you foul and you try to trap and then get after the first pass you foul? You try to make him throw over the top. If you can get them to throw over the top, you go for the steal. But if you can't, if they can't do that, if, 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 if Utah's really any good at this, then they're going to have to foul immediately. But Dave, so who's in? They got Justin Bivens yeah. out there, the smallest guy in the court. Put some size. Is anybody even guarding yeah. the ball? Well, nobody's guard, face guarding the ball. Well, they're going to do the double pass out of bounds and throw it into Bivens, who's an expert free throw. And he just nailed two of them, right? And for Larry Kriskoviak, that was a, a smart call right there. I think UCLA was trying to figure out when Bibbins inbounded the ball, do we guard the inbound pass or do we not? But this is a great inbound play here. And, and, and one of the Terrific. beautiful things about talking to Kriskoviak today, I mean, he played for Popovich, he played for Mike Montgomery, he played for Phil Jackson, he played for Jerry Sloan here in attendance today. Bibbins gets the first one, it's a three-point game. And none of those guys were like these extraordinary X and O guys. They were people persons. They were guys who, who went out there and tried to reach you emotionally. And that's what Larry Kriskoviak does. And he's masterful at the X's and O's, but that's not what the game is about. It's not about strategy. It's about people. It's not about film. It's not about scouting. Matchups. No. Down four, Holiday for three, no good. Parker everywhere. And I fouled. Now we've been talking up as a victory for Utah. How about Justin Bibbins? 18 of 18 at the free throw line his last five games. Parker Van Dyke inserted in the starting lineup two games ago. Utah playing without one of its leading scores in Cedric Bearfield because of an injury, yet the Utes still get a quality win to bolster their NCAA tournament resume. This guy, Parker Van Dyke, he loves 
competition. He lives for the pressure. You can just see him. You can see the physical fitness level that he has the rest of his teammates. Rock Stevenson, the great strength and conditioning coach, who has given all these guys the confidence and belief that they can get this job done, and this game is over. Utah moving up. Bruins, a night of soul searching. And Van Dyke getting mobbed by his teammates. A new career high, 18 points as Utah wins its fifth straight game. And eight out of 10 for the Utes, their final two games here at home. For Hall of Famer Bill Walton, I'm Dave Pash. So long from Salt Lake City. Sports Center up next on ESPN with Zubin and Bucci. Utah, life elevated.